Hey guys, today I'm going to um, do a special prayer at the ending and I'll explain that in a minute. Welcome. I hope that you guys are doing well today and um, God just wants me to tell you today that he's got your back. Like, oh, I'm going to back up um, my chair so you guys can see my mouth. I'm not doing a Wilson from Home Improvement thing. to pray this time at the ending um, and that there's a specific reason why but God wants me to tell you guys that he's got your back whatever you're facing whatever you're going through he's got you he's got you you've got the God of the universe on your side you've got the God of the universe who loves you who's fighting for you who, who will wrap his arms around you, who will just love on you, who will fight for you in every way. And he wants you to know just today through me that he's got you and he loves you and he wants you to understand what he's thinking about you. He thinks you're the most amazing person ever. He thinks that you're awesome. He thinks that you're great and everything that you're going through, whether good or bad, happy or sad, he's using it for his good. And I know we often say that, but for some reason this morning, he wants me to reiterate how much he loves you, how much he's thinking of you, how much he just, wants you to have a life that is just full of grace and full of productivity. He doesn't want you to sit on the gifts he's given you. He wants you to embrace what he's given you and run with it. Or sometimes he may want you to slow down and stop running. And another thing he's saying today is to listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He's saying it's time to develop your spiritual muscles and listen. It's time to open your spiritual eyes and see. It's time to open your spiritual ears and listen. It's time to open your spiritual mouth and speak. Sometimes we've been quiet for too long and he wants us to open up our spiritual senses and, and speak, listen, and see what's really going on. See, as in this physical realm, um, so in the spiritual realm. So we need to open up. We have our physical senses, our taste, our touch, our smell, our, our taste, our touch, our smell, our sight, and our hearing. But in, in the spiritual world, we also have those senses. And I think that he needs and not I think I can hear him saying I need you to open up your senses to really understand that there is a world beyond this one and there's a fight that we have to fight but I think sometimes in the church we are so deaf we are so into our um, little world our little idiosyncrasies 
our little church schedules, we don't understand that there's a shift going on. We don't understand. We don't understand that there's a fight of wickedness going on, and there's there's a and there's a fight against everything that God instituted and put in place. We as the people of God. We as the children of God need to stand up and understand who we are and whose we are. Something very disturbing uh, happened um, last week at, at my church. Not disturbing, but startling. Um, for those of you who don't know, I live in Toronto, Canada, so lately um, our basketball team, the Toronto Raptors, won the championship, which is awesome. It's great for our city. It's great for our, our morale. But last week at my church, um, the, the preacher said um, something about the Toronto Raptors, and cheers went up, and that was good. Said it's awesome because it's awesome for the city and whatever, but I'm like, what? Like, why are we getting this excited? I understand why, but we get so excited over basketball teams, baseball teams, football teams winning championships, and that's awesome. And but we take God, the God of the universe. The God who loves us, the God who made us, like not only us but this whole world, we take him so lightly and we come to church and just stroll in whatever we want. This is serious church. We need to wake up and understand that there is a battle. There's a spiritual battle going on and behind every physical thing there is a spirit behind it and he's saying to test the spirit to understand that it is of me whether it is of me or not and to fight appropriately see we're too busy fighting people and not busy enough fighting the spirit behind it you see you see the what why the whole world is in trouble is because we we, we, we're we spiritually blind and we're spiritually deaf and we don't understand that not only the earth is groaning but people are groaning for the gospel. People are longing for something real, something authentic and we need to understand that there's a spiritual battle going on. The Bible says we wrestle not against principalities, powers, but but against rulers of darkness, and it goes on and on. We we're wrestling, church, and we don't understand that God is telling us to move, to understand what's going on in the spiritual world. He's got us so dis. The devil has got us so distracted that we can't even see that there is new stuff to be done. There is new revelation he wants to give. There is new things he wants to institute in the church. But we're too busy with our schedule. We're too busy with our little uh, 5.2 points. A uh, sermon, a sermon that we don't realize that there is a battle, and the Lord, and the Lord would say, stop being busy with issues and focus on what's really going on. See, um, see, we are so busy with issues that we got an issue here, we got an issue with our kids, we got an issue with this, that we don't understand that, that that busyness is a distraction. And the Lord is saying, 
to wake up. There are new things I want to do, but I can't do them because we are so plugged into our, to whatever our church literature is, whatever our church does, that there is no room for me to really move. He's saying, you asked for me to move, but there is no room. It's like you're asking for something, but not creating room for God to move. And we're saying, move between this time of the service and hype us up, give us drugs, give us, when I say drugs, I mean spiritual drugs, shoot us in the arm with a word. We need a word from you. We need something. We've had so much word that we don't even know what we're doing anymore. It's time for us to go out and move. It's time for us to take back territories and not in an aggressive way. I see people preaching on the street and whatever and I, I just say, I just say, have you ever seen, seen Jesus? Did you ever, I didn't. Did you ever see Jesus was in the Bible stand on the street corner and preach to people? No. He met people where they were. He started conversation with people. He he met them. He got them into a place where they could understand. He didn't stand out there and preach to people. He He, he was a master of conversation. And I think we need to get back to just meeting people where they are. Like, we need, we need to start saying, I don't care if you believe in my God or not. I just want to be there for you. I want to help you. I want to hold your hand. I want to, I want to be your friend without, um, you you feeling like you're being forced to do something that you don't want to do and once you open that door to just be there for somebody your ministry opportunity will open up so don't become friends with somebody or don't don't automatically invite them to church be there for them be there for them, hold their hand, and, and just, just be a light to them. And then eventually that ministry door will open and you will start sharing the gospel. And you know what? If it doesn't open through you, it might open through someone else. And if it doesn't, well, then that's God and the person. We need to stop trying to be people's personal Holy Spirit and just be there for people. Just talk to people. Meet people where they are. Say hello to people. Love people. And love doesn't mean, oh, we accept everything you do. Love means to me is we embrace you despite the fact that we may not agree with you. Love doesn't mean that you agree with everything that the person does. Love means wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, whether I agree or disagree, I embrace you in spite of all your mess, all your issues. And I think that's what we need to do as a society in the church. As of the society and the church. So guys, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to pray a special, press a special prayer for you um, now. Um, uh, today, as I said, I live the city I live in. Um, it's our Pride weekend, and as I was thinking about this, God gave me a special acronym for Pride. He said Pride meant peace, 
righteousness, integrity, discernment, and equality. Um, the peace that passes all understanding will guide, will guard our heart and mind. Um, that's what he said to me today. And he, and he was redefining pride, not as to meaning who, who you are attracted to or who you sleep with at night. He redefined it, it to mean what we stand on as according to his word. He wants us to, to, to stand on his word. And anything that doesn't stand on his word is not anything to be proud of. It's something to be prayed for. And we need to understand that prayer can change things. And we need to get down and start interceding, start praying, not attacking people but attacking the spirit behind the thing. And I'm going to pray for those five points for you guys today. God, I pray that you'll give us the peace that passes all understanding. God, I pray that you'll cause us to walk righteous and uprightly before you, God. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll give us wholeness and integrity, God. I pray that your spirit will endow us with power. That we that we will just be vessels of you. God and I pray that that you will give us discernment, God. And I pray that our you will make us equal with each other, God. Cause us to understand that wherever we sit, whatever face, whatever face, face we are, whatever, whether we're atheist, whether we're Muslim, whether we're Christian, whether we're, we don't know, whether we're agnostic, Lord God, that we all come from you, whether we know it or not. Bring us to an understanding of who you are and who you are in the name of Jesus. Who we who we are and whose we are, which is yours. Lord God, we need you. Lord God, give us a new understanding of what pride means. How to stand on your word. How to be how to be people that will fight for righteousness at any cost. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So guys, I will see you next week. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate that you that you are so um that you are being fed by what the Lord has given to me. It, it, it means so much to me. Thank you so much. Bye. It is well. It is well. He's got your back. You don't need to worry. It is well. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea.
to have integrity to be discerning and to uh, and remember that we're all equal in Christ bye <laughs>